In this video lecture, we're going to look at the diurnal temperature scheme. So we're looking at temperature, how temperature uh, works throughout the day from sunrise to sunset and then to sunrise the next morning. So let's look at a, a, a graph, if you will, of what happens with solar radiation. So this is solar radiation throughout the day. So we've got a graph here, and then there's the mid part, and we're going to call this, this line here, solar noon, which is the sun's zenith. It's the high point of the sun at, at the midday, solar noon. It's not, solar noon doesn't typically happen at 12 noon, but it happens when the sun is directly overhead and kind of has a, a pause to it. Okay, so let's look at, this is sunrise and this is sunset. So as the sun rises in the east, we get radiation that starts to build. And then when the sun is over, directly overhead, that is the maximum solar radiation, okay? And solar radiation, uh, how we measure it, is expressed in watts per meter squared. So that is the unit that we use to express how much radiation is being received at a particular location. So in the morning, from sunrise to solar noon, we have a nice, as long as it's clear outside, we have a nice slope to the solar noon. Once the sun passes solar noon, the solar radiation also decreases to sunset. And what we get is a nice curve uh, a, a symmetrical curve indicating that when the sun rises we start to accumulate that radiation and then once the sun reaches that midpoint uh, in the sky, the highest point in the sky, this, the sun's zenith, then we start to decrease. Okay, So this is what's happening with the solar radiation. Now let's look and see what happens when we add the temperature. Okay, and we're going to put a dashed line for the temperature. Solar radiation will be a solid line as indicated here. All right. As the sun rises, the temperature is a result of the radiation. Okay, if you remember from the previous video lectures, we talked about how insulation gets absorbed by the Earth's surface and then radiates or emits as long wave radiation. It's a three step process. Okay. So temperature is not going to be equal to radiation. It's not going to rise with solar radiation. It's going to take some time. There's a temperature lag. Okay? So as the sun rises, the radiation is then beginning to accumulate, accumulate, and over time, we finally get the temperature rising. Okay? And then at about 2 o'clock to 4 o'clock, in a typical summer day, or if we take all the seasons out and we just say the maximum temperature occurs between 2 and 4 p.m., that is the point where we have achieved the total accumulation of radiation and it's emitting now as a temperature. Between 2 and 4 p.m., we get that maximum temperature. As that, then that's, that's two hours or three hours after the the solar noon okay once we reach, uh, once we have re achieved a maximum temperature then we start to lose the energy and then we get temperature decreasing towards sunrise okay so the maximum temperature occurs between 2 and 4 p.m. now if the sun decided to stay put at solar noon and not move, not start to set, then what happens is that temperature would continue to rise. It would, that temperature would continue to rise. But because the sun is then setting and we're reducing the amount of radiation at the surface, then the temperature a few hours later will begin to fall as well. Okay? When the sun goes down, when the sun goes down, then the temperature continues to fall. Okay? 
the temperature will reach its most minimum temperature just before sunrise. The minimum temperature occurs just before sunrise. Okay. If the sun did not want to appear the next morning, then that temperature will continue to fall. And it would probably get to the point where it just freeze. Okay. So, but we have the sunrise, okay, the next morning. Then the temperature reaches its minimum temperature, okay, the most lowest temperature. When the sun begins to rise, then we start the whole process again. Okay. So there is a a two to three hour lag, a temperature lag. Okay. When the sun rises, we get a temperature lag. Okay. So in order to get the temperature going, you have to have enough radiation at the surface to accumulate. Okay. That temperature rises, and then two to three hours after solar noon, we get the maximum temperature. And this is all without the influence of frontal systems. Okay. No weather fronts. And then as the sun begins to set, we start to decrease our temperature. Now, if you look at this graphic that I'm showing you now, you will see a perfect, uh, perfect, clear, sunny day. And if you look at the green line, the green line, that is temperature. The olive hump, the symmetrical hump, uh, that is solar radiation. And there, are, it is perfectly rounded. Okay. Then you look at the temperature, notice where that maximum temperature occurs. It occurs after solar noon. And then it begins to fall because now the, sun, the sun's radiation is no longer influencing the Earth's surface directly.